Hello everybody, welcome back to Cougar City Gamings. Today we're looking at the patch notes for the new update 35. And I mean it's it's a little bit of a downer, man. Um we're gonna start with the better part of things, which um it's the Tales of Tribute. Tribute NPCs are now a little smarter during the matches. Uh companion chatter is now suppressed. I mean, I liked when Ember was talking to me, but I guess some people didn't care about that. And then they fixed an issue that prevented placement and ranked trivia matches from updating after a match ends. That is really rough. Like, I've noticed this, and I'm glad they're actually fixing it. They fixed the issue that would cause somebody to forfeit. A lot of people got banned for exploiting that. And then um, they fixed an issue that could get you stuck in the trivia finder queue i haven't experienced that but um it is what it is uh the achievement tales of tribute master now requires all of its components to be uh completed and the trivia daily quest cards across the continent will now increment the trivia daily quest related achievements properly that's pretty cool uh align the clue for somerset sacking with a card upgrade that it points to somerset raid oh my goodness okay sure um now, they said that they've been keeping a close eye on the Tales of Tribute and specific cards that have over or underperformed. Um, I don't know why they, they increased the gold <laughs> of Scratch, but whatever. Uh, increased the gold generation from Hireling to two gold from one, and then increased the value to acquire Oathman from six to five. That's pretty good. Um, I mean, it's okay. They they buffed the Sigic deck quite a bit, um, and then reduced the replace from Sigic inside one to two, and increased the toss from four to three, which is nice. I like that toss from four to three. This is a deck like all of this is really good. They, I'm glad they kind of do that because that puts that deck kind of a little bit of bit a hat at a little bit of an advantage over others where it's not really um like it's a good deck to play it's just there's people that don't know how to play the Sigic deck correctly so that's pretty good uh prowling shadow Hunt no longer has a taunt reduce the gold cost of jeering shadow from four to five uh, i mean that's good and then jarring lullaby from seven to six so the rajin deck actually got a little bit of um a little bit of a buff uh, reduce the combo to power generation from midnight raid to two from three. That card is ridiculous. Like, it's if you have two of those and there's three of those in the deck on the tribute tavern deck. So if you have two out of the three, you're getting twelve, um, twelve power a turn. It was insane. Like I'm glad they kind of buff, um, fix that because that combo is just insane. Uh, Imperial Spoils Knight generates one gold on combo two. That's pretty good. And then it, they increase the gold generation from Imperial Plunder to two from one. This is the best part. Increase the Armory to six. That is definitely good. Increase the goal of Rally to eight. And reduce the gold generation from Siege Weapons from two to one. And then the Reinforcement card can now be upgraded to Legion's Arrival by acquiring a following clue. That's pretty cool. Now, a lot of people are like, oh, they, they nerfed the St. Paling deck. Guys, the Armory is a very good card. If you were able to, like, let's say that the Tavern flipped that, and whoever went first that had the five gold to get it, they are going to get that card, no matter what other deck they're building. That card is busted in the early game, and it can be busted in the late game. Rally is another one, kind of like a mid-game uh, card. Now, you can get it, like, on turn four uh, if you're lucky. So, there it is. Um, there's a bunch of dueling stuff. Um, the good part is the Tribute Season rank trophy furnishings will now be granted for... Oh, my God. So, they're getting participation trophies. Okay. Sure. Um, that's, 
a lot of furnishings for houses. Uh, they did the they did double the gold found in tribute bags, so that's pretty good. And then we are not gonna get soul gems, poisons, or all that shenanigans that was there. And the only problem is we're gonna not get that much alchemy shit from them anymore. That's unfortunate. And then they reduced the chance of receiving the recipes, which is good because it's kind of like flooding the market a little bit. So that's good. Now, winning multiple matches for tribute will now grant a passive progressively higher based on your victories. That's pretty cool. Um, blue, purple, and gold quality rewards for one, two, and three wins. There you go. Okay. The post-game match summary now displays your club rank increase. Yes, that's actually pretty awesome. I like that. I like that. Updated the description of Patreon collectibles. Um, they have clear acquire hints. That's okay. Um, boats, caravans from the major. Okay, so they have uh, a little bit of some cool stuff. And here is where it gets really bad, guys. Light attacks are now flat damage. I mean, this is, uh, this is, this is all ridiculous. So they ran, they ran a test in the Greymore era and light and heavy attacks were nerfed, kind of like what they are now. And then they, a lot of people just were like sending feedback and it was they didn't implement it because of that player feedback um there were a lot of positive notes and remarks we took away from the change list overall and this time around we're implementing the good parts from the received feedback overall we are keeping light attacks in place of the top dps producing results um the main reason for streamlining these values was to reduce the bloat of damage production they can provide at a high level Also, retain the damage level. Who we'll rely on them to and do so? We've also been able to adjust item sets that augment these effects to be much more impactful, without the concern of creating higher burst potential in PvP environments, helping all in all environments. Now I understand what they're trying to do. I just don't think they're doing it very well. So. Why fix something that is not broken? There's a lot of ways that they can keep the game fresh. One of the ways is just keeping it like it is. Let the power creep happen and just ad adjust the content based on that power creep. Um, for example, Dread Sail Reef. Wonderful trial. Whenever High Isle came out, I was so excited, so happy, because, hey, Sauce finally got something right. Imagine, Sauce got something right. That is 100% hard to believe, folks, believe me. I was so surprised, I was like, oh god, what else? Like, what's going on now? Where's, where's the bomb drop? And I guess this is the bomb drop. Because for as many things that Sauce does that is really good, they go 10 step backwards. And, oh, lo and behold, we have this shit. Now, a lot of people are like, oh, you're overreacting. The, you know, they're nerfing light attacks. It should have never been like that. Light attack weaving should have never been this way. But guys, like, when you look at other MMOs, the light attacks are different. If you guys listen to to our podcast that you know came out this past week, you're gonna understand that these light attack changes and heavy attack changes, it just doesn't affect those higher end players. It affects everybody because 
if you were hitting 55 K DPS, I can tell you your light attacks probably are not the best, but guess what? They're changing a lot of other things besides light attacks. You're literally whipping or jabbing for 20 seconds right now. That's not how I want to play this game. Like, I want it to be the whole reason we have dynamic and static rotations is to keep to keep the game fresh. And it gives a little bit of style to a different class, like a Necro or a Sork or a Templar. Like, the whole reason why people love different classes is because they do things differently. This... All it is, is the same dots and the same spammables are probably going to happen. So a Sork is going to be doing the same stuff that a Necro is going to be doing. There's not going to be any class style or difference. And you're, you know, I guess that's a good thing if you want to play the game like that. But it's boring. Why would you want to play like that? You want to be defined by your class. Now, some people are like, well, this is, you know, the light attack nerf, you know, if they're not going to do that, then I can hit all my other stuff. The DPS is still going to go down, folks. Like, if if you watched a couple of videos of the players doing the actual rotations they would be doing with all of these things in mind and all of these dots, all of these effects they're dropping down 30k dps so if the higher guys are dropping down 30k dps you're probably going to be dropping down half of that now some people are like oh that's a good thing you know it it change you know kind of like bridges the gap a little bit sure it bridges the gap a little bit but you're still going to be hitting probably you know like 55k dps you're still going to be hitting 40k dps at the end of the day so you're still going to be in the same boat as you were before. The biggest thing that I can tell you guys is just practice your rotation. Anybody, if they really want it bad enough and they don't have, you know, disabilities or anything like that, you can, if you practice and you want it bad enough and you work to put a rotation down that has been given by any of these players that, Literally, that's that's what they do. That's their job. Like Skinny Cheeks, Nephis, Synode, any of those guys, they they will give you a rotation. Charles is another one. You just follow them. Follow that rotation. You're going to hit higher numbers if you actually play the rotation correctly. Now, I get it. I get it. People want... To not be able to have like the real score pushing end game players and they they want to have the you want to be able to do the stuff that the end game community is doing that's fine I mean you can do it anybody can do it like unless you have a disability that cannot let you hold the controller in your hand you can do it like there's no reason why you can't do it you just have to work at it. Now, if you work at it, and I've seen plenty of players start at a bad level of DPS, and they're hitting over 100K right now. But they work. They put in the work for it. So, like, why can't you put in the work for it? Just like, you know, somebody that, that's working, you know, they go to college or, you know, they go into their trade profession they work hard and they they basically bust their butts at at a at a job and they get promoted to the top and you know they're somebody's boss like their CEO or whatever like those people i mean i'm not saying all the companies are like that but like there's some companies that have CEOs or management that have worked their butt off to get to that point so why can't we do that to get to this point of the end game that you're wanting to get. I mean, it's it's just in, insane. 
I really liked what they did is, you know, the hybrid thing. I, I'm not, I'm still not too rough with it, but I understand why they did it to make sure that, hey, if you want to be a, a Sork, you can play with a two-hander or dual wheel than a staff. That's fine. I was okay with that. And, you know, people are playing the game how, how they want to play. Now, obviously, you know, the, the 2H and, and dual wield meta is, is there. And you have the dual wield and, and staff meta still there too. But, you know, obviously you have to play a certain way to get the most optimization out of your character. Now, I'm not saying that you can't play the way that you want to play. It's just there's some groups that will ask you to do it because they're trying to optimize the group to be the best score pushing group possible. And I mean, there are groups out there. There's there's a couple of groups in each platform that that's what they do. They try to push the damage as much as possible and try to squeeze every inch of DPS they can from all the sources, healers, tanks, DPS, whatever. They're going to try to squeeze as much as possible. And this whole patch notes, like all these buffs and debuffs that they're doing, yes, there's some good stuff that they're doing to certain classes and such. But overall, this update, guys and gals, it's not good for the community. There's plenty of things they could have done to nerf or buff some classes, and they just didn't do it. They they target light attacks and heavy attacks, and the the backlash now is even worse because Sauce does not understand that that's part of the game. It's in the game. You literally made us play the game like this from the very beginning. If you're not wanting that, why not just do it at the very beginning of the game when you put this whole shenanigan out back at VR 14 in PC, not even on console. Why not do it on PC when this whole thing was a, a thing? You know why? You know why they didn't do that? Because it's different from other MMOs. This game is a little bit different. Hence why people are are going crazy. And there's there's people on the forums just going nuts. This guy says first, I would like to say that I am a long time end player. Not high end is that I don't do score pushing. But I have some trifex and trials and dungeons, and I'm currently in a God Slayer prog. I see update 35 causing a lot of negativity and anxiety. Yes, I also think that increasing the dot times is extreme, and the same time makes the rotation boring. This is perfect. This is dead on what I'm talking about. But the thread is not about that. I often see comments that casuals and beginners shouldn't be able to quickly and easily master veteran hard mode content. And no matter how good the changes in update 35 are, I like to share my thoughts on why more acceptable combat and content av availability would be a boon for ESO. First, what is Elder Scrolls Online? Obviously it's an MMO in the TES universe, but it would be naive to believe that this game is only for fans of the Elder Scrolls series. I mean, he's not wrong. ESO is first and foremost a game service, and like any other similar project, it strives to embrace and keep the mass player. However, ESO is very different from the classic RPG from the Elder Scrolls series. Honestly, Fallout 76 is more like Elder Scrolls Online than ESO itself. Moreover, ESO, unlike many other modern MMOs, is completely devoid of important sandbox elements. The game does not have the ability to build a house, a wide and complex crafting system, world and guild PvP with location retention, and so on. ESO is a game entirely about conquering content. Clear the location, complete all quests, get achievements, close the trial dungeon, complete daily quests, blah, 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 blah. This is all carried out by combat. I want to say that combat is the core of ESO. Wow. Let me say this again. 
combat is the core of ESO. Yes, the game has house decoration, fishing, blah, blah, blah. It, there's a lot of ways to play the game. They're not wrong. Um, you know, there's people that just love to fish. There's people that just do housing. There's people that play Tales of Tribute 24-7. That's fine. But all this does not represent some kind of really deep system that combat is. Rich said in one of his interviews that he plans to add more non-combat activities to the game, which is awesome. I like that. I like adding stuff that's, you know, non-combat activities because you want to keep the people that don't care about the combat aspect. They just want to quest or whatnot. You want to get them engaged to the game. And that would be really great. I like Tales of Tribute. I think is a wonderful job. Like, it's a card game. I'm a card game player. It's amazing. Don't get me wrong. It's amazing. But I can't imagine a scenario in which ESO turns into Sims, Minecraft, or even something similar to BDO. It turns out that a player who cannot fully master the combat is deprived of the opportunity to master the core game. And these, this is where the problem begins. ESO is an all game. Yes, the golden days for ESO are over. Moreover, we see how many new players come to ESO to begin to compare with other multiplayer projects, which is true. All this ESO cannot, all this ESO cannot give, and is unlikely to be able to give in the future. All that ESO can give is questing, quality PvE content, dynamic PvP. It's not bad, don't get me wrong, Sauce is best at creating PvE content and better than many other similar projects. Absolutely 100% correct. They are really good at creating PvE content. And here we come face to face with the combat system. <laughs> she is beautiful, unique, and dynamic, but there is one significant problem. Too much learning curve. <sighs> We're all here understand. We all here understand perfectly well why real tanks do not want to run random normals. We almost we all know very well that almost no one uses random vet. This is on PC, by the way. Now, just imagine how many people every day on all servers and all platforms are faced with a completely frustrating experience. Rich said that he didn't want to create a queue for trials because it's completely pointless. That is not wrong. It is pointless because you're not going to get people to do it. Um, you might as well join Trials Guild. It's This game is getting harder and harder to attract new players. Um, literally in the first week after release, the past chapters, there were a crowd of players around each quest marker. Now it's empty and quiet. I think Zoss can no longer keep the population with the new releases and events every month. New players are no longer interested, and old players, even casual ones, are losing interest in generic content and endless recurring events. Therefore, Sauce decided to simplify the fight in order to attract as many players as possible to the core of ESO. Remember the Somerset patch when the damage was greatly increased? There has been a real boom in veteran content. Many players began to conquer trials and dungeons. It wasn't as hard anymore, and it wasn't as really painful as it used to be. But apparently, it wasn't enough. More precisely, this was enough to keep the populations of players back then, but not now. Many commentators are quite emotional about the combat changes in update 35 saying that sauce wants every casual newbie to be able to close hard mode rgs and dsrs this is not true i mean it, it is not true nowhere in the patch notes there's any mention of killing the skill factor it's true that if the player doesn't want to master combat he won't but if the player wants to master the fight then he gets on a rather difficult path it takes years in different cases of course but it's still quite a long time for weaving and home rotation to, to simply become a habit. In addition, weaving and rotation is not a, is not all. You still need to be able to apply skills, mechanics, and situation. 100% true. This, this is not just about dummy humping. This is about applying mechanics to situations. You need to learn how to correctly burst and finish off. And you need to know how this game works and the mechanics. Yes, the skill factor of the player cannot be ruled out. But the problem is that these skills give too much advantage for your DPS. Yes, it does. Um, but... 
you still have to i mean you can't finish trifectas without mechanic uh mechanics and people hitting the dps required that is needed to complete the trial in a specific time and this guy's like i've been playing this game almost since release i have two and to be honest, the combat system has not changed in any way in all these eight years. Absolutely, it has not changed. But they should have changed it. They should have made these changes way back in the day before they even brought it to console. Why not make that change when you go into console so you could start fresh? And this guy's like, I learned weaving when it became relevant, but it took me a year or two to master completely. It took me even longer to learn a generally high... Uh, APM. Since then, nothing has changed and nothing significant will change in this patch. Look at it for yourself. We will still need to weave to be efficient as possible. We'll still need to keep AMP high. In short, ESO is about a game of combat. I'm not disagreeing with any of that. But here's the thing. If you're going to lower the DPS, you need to lower the stuff that they have, post they have put out to basically make up for that because god slayer with this with this patch is not going to happen there i mean i don't know about pc but on console we already struggle to to get stuff down god slayer is is a hard trifecta to do mainly because of the timing planesbreaker Rock Grove is rough because of the timing, the DPS checks. You have to, if you're a sauce, you have to think about what you did when you put those type of contents out and what the DPS was. I can guarantee you that VSS, yes, the DPS wasn't as high. And a lot of people complained because it was near impossible to get the trifecta in there when it first came out. But eventually people got it. Um, you have to think about what you're doing and the content that you've put out already to compensate for the DPS creep. You can't, you can't do that. And There, this guy said it. There's a clear distinction between what they wanted to do and what they accomplish, and they're not making the combat more accessible. The oak and soul ring, which I thought was the best idea that Sauce could have had, they just made it really powerful. Um, I understand what they were trying to get at, but to be honest, that oak and soul ring had no reason to be in pvp in the first place why not leave the ring alone this is this is part of the problem this is one thing that i've been talking about for years now for years change the way sets are in pvp and then pve make two different servers so when somebody goes into pvp with the oak and soul ring they get this instead of what the oaken soul is now the oaken soul in pve content is actually pretty good right now the way it is it provides those people that you are wanting to literally rise up it provides those players what you're trying to do and guess what it's getting nerfed it's getting nerfed. And radiating is an easy way to heal a group that isn't coordinated and running every which way. It's taking a 40% healing hit. 40%, guys. 40%. And, I mean, this patch hurts the most people that it was supposed to help. This guy is, like, literally... You know, if somebody was able to barely do VMA on, li on live, they won't be able to do it most of the time after the new patch. Like, those nerfs are so bad that even people in Overland will feel it. <laughs> I would prefer if it would be true. And for the end game, there are things that hurt more than some nerfs. Let's start with the fact that long dots make combat boring. 
this is the second person that says combat is boring. As the DK, I used my spam bolt 20 times in a row. Sorry, but this is just boring. It is, it is, it is. Why would you want to like put down the hots and then just spam the freaking whip for 20 cast? That is horrible. I'm sorry, but like, no, I like, I like a little bit of versatility in my game. And then next up, they tick every two seconds now. Not a big deal, right? Wrong. Damage loss from PV, and I mean, he's took every one second. So tanks health will jump even more and could create more dangerous situations. There would be a situation where people will day will die because of late healing tick. I am, to be honest... I almost want Sauce to put this patch through so you could see how bad of a fuck up you are doing to this game. And the meta change. Again, people have to change their weapons. They buffed 2H so it was good in back bar. Now they over nerfed it. People are tired of changes. Like, if this was a small nerf, maybe nobody would care, but they just send it to oblivion. That's what I was talking about. I don't mind changes, nerfs, buffs here and there. Keep the game fresh. It does. Encourage players and DPS, tanks, healers to play different classes. Um, you know, certain patches. Like, let's say this patch. Hey, the Templar got a nerf. You know, maybe we should have a Templar healer in the group. Or this patch. Guys, the Templar is kind of dead. You know, it's not worth it. Let's have a Necro and, and a Warden instead. Oh, guys, well, they they rough the warden a little bit. So, um, yeah, Templar is back again. You know, that, it's it's nice. It's change. It's something different. And this, this says right here, boss mechanics and dots. There are bosses that move around every 12 seconds or don't take damage every 15 seconds until you do mechanics. Dots become a lot weaker in those places. Let's not talk about trash packs. Oh, man. So in short, everybody's nerfing for that. We get nothing. Just nothing. There's no benefit. If there is, I'm sorry, but I don't see it. I don't see it either. Believe me. I don't see it either. I don't think anybody in ESO but Sauce sees the benefit. And if they see the benefit, I would like to know what benefit you see. Because, obviously, if there is a benefit, you failed to, to give your audience, you know, something to see the benefit. And about trusting sauce, NPC yelling at me when I do the daily rates this patch. I'm sorry, but trust isn't a candy that you get just because you want it. And there's this guy right here. This is a casual player. I don't have any interest in anything beyond questing in Overland. And with this patch, assuming it goes live this way, I won't be able to just quest in Overland. It's as if those people are pushing for harder overland, got exactly what they wanted, in a sideways, almost back ass words sort of way. The bottom line here is that I have crap internet and my reflexes are old. If I can't manage to get through overland without dying every time I wind up fronting two mobs, then why am I playing this game and paying three annual subs? Wow. Yes, this is what I'm talking about. This player is a very casual player. And to be honest, all the games have it. You have casual players. We <laughs> Saws is trying to make this casual player's lives better. But this guy's saying, it's going to be bad. I won't be able to do that. <laughs> and then this guy's like, it might take you longer to kill everything. Yes, but if it takes you longer to kill everything, then stuff can kill you a lot quicker. Ugh. Man, like, people do not like change for the most part. No, we like change, but this isn't change. This is like a whole different game. It's not change. It's a whole different game. It's, and this is, this is, this is exactly on point right here huge negativity because sauce is not doing what they said longer buff timers huge nurture healing and even class skills cannot help the newbies it cannot narrow the skill gap 
ESO doesn't provide a good game tutorial. This is this is literally it. We've been talking about maybe Salt should add a weaving tutorial onto the game. Something. Like they added the the combat the the DPS dummy. That's fine. That's perfect. You know, it provided a way for the players to to know how to DPS and and get better. But there's nothing in the game where it, unless you're on PC and you have add-ons that tells you, hey, you missed X number of light or heavy attacks. There's nothing. There's nothing. So, and this is, this is another. The developers are speaking in yesterday's ESO live stream made several changes or references to the long-term plan or something to that effect. Saying that the changes outline for <laughs> what are the long term plans? Like, I want to know because if these changes are outlined and part of this vision, then you need to be a little bit more. You need to elaborate because this is quite vague. Is simply a line being used to explain away from initial criticism? Um. <laughs> Yeah, like, I mean, this guy says it. Due to the levels of discontent around the patch notes and in the spirit of the increased communication and transparency that was promised by Sauce, perhaps it would be a good idea to make a statement elaborating on what this plan entails, what the vision is, what the end point is. Just an idea. Wow. Yes. Because that is part of the problem. Increased communication and and transparency they and i'm not saying that they haven't tried they are trying to increase the communication and we've seen a little bit more of that with certain things in the game but this guy says it all i don't think they have a long-term plan at all i don't think so either you know why because if they had a long-term plan they probably would have said something knowing that this kind of backlash that they had in Greymoor was coming back to bite them here too. So if you have a long-term plan, why not just make that long-term plan available to some extent so we can actually see what the hell is going on over there in your minds. From what they're saying, I've been saying, I think they want to reduce the big balance changes. Um, and because they have these spreadsheets that tell them that balance is, they keep shifting things until they find something that sticks. The problem is that Sauce's vision isn't nearly as concrete as they're making it sound to be. It's true. It's true. They could have been much closer to balance if they actually took the learnings from a patch and applied them the next patch rather than completely changing everything and throwing all that knowledge to the wind. Sauce approach balance has always been the sledgehammer. They have never fine-tuned anything properly, properly because they would rather completely flip the boards every three months. Which, to be honest, that's fine. I'm all for flipping the boards. But this is not flipping the boards. This is like taking that board, cracking it in half, and throwing it out there to the storm. Just saying. And... The long-term plan is to create a minimum viable product while catering to whales so they can make a ton of money through the crown store. I mean, that's the only game, the long-term game that I th that I see. I mean, it's 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 just bad. It's just bad. And then somebody's like, just trying to understand the logic here. Why and where this th th this idea to change? almost everything about combat in the game come from. Did I miss the mass of people complaining about DPS? Um, and then somebody's like, not that I saw, I've seen some of the more vocal folks about Overland difficulty being too easy for many years, but in my opinion, the consensus almost always center around that being optional. Numbers creep they could have addressed in myriad of simpler, streamlined, even background ways that did not necessitate sort of rebuilding lots of players are going to have to do. To say nothing of the timing. And then Sauce has been trying to nerf top end DPS for like three years. True story. Every attempt has drastically failed. It's no surprise they are trying again. And it seems successfully so. 
and somebody's like, doesn't matter if these changes were asked for or not. It's obvious Sauce does not listen to consumers. Instead, they just come out with ran- they just come up with random ideas and think of a way to make it as bad as possible for everybody. It's true. If they were listened to consumers, which they kind of did in Graymore and kind of not, you know, got that. Um, so I'm hoping they listen to this as well. Like it's, I don't know. Um, my understanding is that there's bad management plus dev teams need something to do. They can introduce new features, but it would take much more development time than refining old features. So that's what we get. I don't know about random, but it does seem like an approach to math that takes into account engaging the combat team so that the bean counters don't look to cut them. Since reducing the top end numbers could be done any number of different ways that doesn't and doesn't make the community into Moss High Sleep. <laughs> and while I respect that approach to stave off layoffs or switches from full time employees to contractors, it reveals leadership with unequal footing with the suits and the and an inability to gain it. Part of the reason I think change would be good. But those are just my ramblings. <laughs> yes, they had dressing concerns. Like this, there are people who hate light attack weaving. This is a sauce attempt at fixing and meeting halfway because removing it is not possible. And then there are people who find the constant upkeep of dots quite annoying, so they increase the <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, this is. This is insane. I mean, I believe this. I believe this. I assume it's Microsoft asking for more openness and inclusion to make the game easier for more customers, which is why they went a sudden turnaround from the previous direction. Okay, so there's ways to make the game a little bit better for customers, okay? And we talked about this in our podcast this past week. Um, there's, there's ways to get those players to actually get into the end game content a little bit better. It's called putting hard modes in normal trials and normal DLC dungeons. Let me say it again. Put hard modes into normal trials and DLC dungeons. So for example, you want to do normal Dreadsail Reef. Okay, that's fine. Make it a little bit harder. Make, um, you know, have some mechanics that are added in. And they don't have to necessarily do the hard mode of the hard mode. They could have it to where if you activate hard mode, it's kind of an in-between normal and vet. There's a little bit of... um, that bosses have a little bit more health um where the the resistances are a little bit better the some of the stuff will hit a little bit harder um you could even have it to where you know things can kill you um a little bit easier than regular normal dread cell reef you could do that in the dungeons too, in the normal dungeons, do the same thing. It creates the little gap from normal to vet. Right now, a lot of people are complaining that normal trials are really easy. And yes, it's nice to gear farm, go in there, get your shit, but make a little bit of a hard mode in those normal trials. You don't even have to give out perfected gear, just give them purple jewelry for all I care. It doesn't matter. Now, people people are like, oh, why not gold? No, you kind of want to keep the the gold jewelry into the vet content. You kind of want to keep stuff tied so it makes it um, where somebody will still want to achieve. But this, this, is, this is not it. And ESO is a fundamentally an MMO, which is supposed to deliver meaningful player progression towards a power fantasy experience. This is true in both PvE and PvP. It's not a competitive game where bad players feel unfairly punished by better players due to knowledge. And the fact the cooperation of good and bad players is probably the only thing keeping the end game ticking along is so true. 
for PvE outside of the tiny comp competitive score pushing community, which it is very tiny by the way, the only reason veterans continue to do trials after earning trifectas is to help the newer players. Hello, Project Vitality calling. Hey, it's Project Vitality calling. This is what we're doing. The symbiosis requires the players carrying the run to eke out significantly above average DPS to make up for the lower DPS of those being carried. No low DPS player is going to complain about better players doing better DPS as the outcome benefits everybody. Hello? They will be happy to clear the content and be happy that they made a meaningful Ablight smaller contribution. However, by lo lowering the floor DPS and ceiling DPS light, there's less buffer for carrying bad players and they will most likely not make the cut or have a much higher expectation placed upon them. This leads to a more stressful and potentially even toxic experience for everybody involved in the raid. Yes, because imagine now if you have a player that is, you know, a decent guy or a gal, you know, you like to have fun. You want to make sure that, you know, they're your buddy. They, everybody gets along in the group. And, you know, their DPS is maybe 10 or 20k under what you usually do. So, I'm not talking about the score pushing groups. I'm talking about just the regular pro groups that are out there helping players. So, that player now is going to feel bad because they, I mean, most players know. If you have that kind, that player in your group, they know. They know who they are. They know that in some way, shape, or form, they're getting a little bit carried. They are. Not saying it's a bad thing. They still contribute. You know, we have had players in the past in some of our groups that contribute quite a bit to the team, but they were just not there at that point. But they contributed a hell lot of you know to the team and mechanics, staying alive, blah, blah, blah. Now, those players, I don't know if I we could potentially get them in the team because it'll be hard enough getting carried to try to, like, get stuff done, you know, with this expectation that Sauce is putting on us. So, I mean, it, it is. This, this, this patch will be more important than ever. These nerfs will create more toxicity and gatekeeping. No one can afford to carry others anymore. You think it's bad now? Low DPS being kicked from dungeons, tanks bailing, wait until next patch. Did you just break 60k and got into trials? Yay, hold on, um, back to 50k. Sorry, bud, more back to 45k. Sorry, mate, you're out. And it's true, because guess what? Every patch, if you're on a team, they probably want to see parses. I know my trifecta team, the raid lead, is wanting parses from everybody. From every class that you think or could think of playing in that group. There's people putting DK, parses, warden, um, sork, and crows. Like, we're literally having DPS put all kinds of parses because our raid lead is basically going and say okay you're parsing higher on a crow than on a sork well you're probably gonna be on a crow we have to like these trifecta groups are just trying to get the squeeze out the most and this is what i'm talking about so if you just broke into that group uh guess what that group is going to compensate for that dps loss and if you're not getting there then you're not gonna have this um uh, there's a lot of friendly end gamers who want to help newer players get into vet content. Project Vitality has started that. There will always be there will always be people pulling higher DPS in groups. And the one the only people who complain that people are better than them are the toxic casuals. Toxic casuals who seem to gatekeep and try to scare off new players from trying vet content and then interacting with end game players. They like to paint a picture of insane toxicity and abuse when that is hardly the case currently. You'll always have bad apples, but the end game community is overall very friendly, welcoming, and willing to share information and how to improve. This is absolutely 100% correct. Now, there's score pushing groups 
that, you know, kind of want to keep stress to themselves until they uh, push a score out there and, and such, uh, a world record or whatnot. And then, you know, they'll share with us their strats. That's actually a lot better than it used to be in years past. In years past, it was hell to try to get somebody to tell you what their strats were or a video or a log because they weren't going to give it to you. And guess what? If for some reason you gave it to somebody, to a friend, and somebody found out in your group that it was you, ooh, that was bad. That was very bad. So the the fact that the Endgame community is teaching and helping newer players get into that content because it's small and it's shrinking day by day should tell you something. This guy's like, I don't really get how closing the gap is important. I don't. How does a high-end player doing 120k DPS and vet trials impact the game experience of players still working on perfecting their rotation in normal dungeons? It doesn't. I had been practicing my rotation and weaving to get my DPS up to an acceptable level for grouping up and harder content. I guess I just won't bother now because I can't see that happening anymore. I know that sounds a fetus, but with half my skills, pets, and wall of elements nerfed by at least 30%, I'm in utter despair. And this is the people that the sauce is trying to get into the end game content. It's not happening. The players that are actually seeing the patch notes and understand what's going on, you know, they'll do. If you can do vet content now, you will, you will for the vast majority of players, be able to do vet content after the changes. If the group knows mechanics, the 20 30k DPS is more than sufficient to finish vet content. Vet hard mode, there might be a need for more. 100% true. Um, correctly closing the gap would be important because it makes the progression smoother from you to mid to mid to high it makes content easier to design you can more easily design variable approaches to content if the dps gap was 10 to 40k instead of 5 to 125k then you could target overline at 10 normal at 10 20 blah 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 a group on the low end of a band could use creative approaches to content to make up for the lower dps they're already doing that folks they're already doing that with the current gap a group of 10k players can't approach 50k dps content no matter how creative they are because the mix the mechanics are too harsh much less 80k content to be honest folks the only thing that is that you need like 80k content for is mm, trifectas hard modes that's it i mean uh I, I'm just in disbelief. I'm just going to close this and tell you guys now. The the best way to keep this game alive right now is just to do the smaller changes that they do each patch. Like they've been doing it before. Even with the hybrid patch. That's fine. Leave the combat as is. Just design the game to to get with the power creep you can nerf dps a little bit to where it's like you know 10k less dps 5k dps loss whatever you can do that but please like this is not a 10 5k dps loss this is a 30k dps loss this is huge this is why we can't have nice things this is exactly what we can't have nice things now in other words i i want to thank our discord boosters and boss style cougars bay scoring music 09 and x reading x thank you for you know boosting our server you know make sure you guys check out our patreon um to find out how you can get a shout out from us not only that but you get new content a day earlier than um anybody else on our podcast and then you can actually see um you can actually see a lot of things a little bit better um you can get an up close conversation with our podcast team and you know if you want to discuss some stuff with our podcast team then there you go this is the best way to do it 
in an environment where it's you and us for 30 minutes asking and giving you all the questions that you need uh, to be answered or, you know, if you just want to hang out and chill with us and, you know, shoot, shoot the crap about Tales of Tribute, like, I'm pretty sure JP and, you know, we'll get both in there to, to come back and do that. But thank you guys for watching. I, I'm sorry that this, this is a little bit of a rant video, but something needs to be said. This is, this is absolutely disgusting what Sauce is doing. And I highly encourage everybody to, to make their voices heard because this is a thing that can potentially kill a game that we all love to play. And this DPS nerf is not at all what they're saying it is. There's people on PTS that have tested. So please get on the forums, get on Twitter, get on Reddit, do whatever you need to do, post videos, get on guild chats, get on zone chats, like send tickets to the developers. I don't care, so whatever, to try to like make them understand that this is not the kind of change that we want as a community. And believe it or not, just because the end game community is, is small, doesn't mean that we don't stand with the casual players and we don't value the casual players. Yes, we do, because guess what? Eventually, some people, you know, will have life issues and have to go and walk away from the game. And guess where those people are replaced with? The casual players that want to get into the content. So obviously, we value every single player in the community just, you know, more than people think. So please, 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 please make sure you guys are sending those tickets and and getting this word out because this is this is a bad patch and i personally do not want to see it happen because it could create a lot of backlash and a lot of people leaving the game for something that could easily be you know not done and and fixed so thanks again make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you can know when we post new videos